expectations grant. It is right for me to prefer, to prefer solutions to the issues I bring up. And at the Deaf Spora Forum, today's topic will give us an opportunity to do that, to show that miseducation is a weapon employed by racists to disparage others. We must point it out for what it is. And because today's topic is so obvious, but we have to look closely at it and see how we have been misinformed and make us all look bad. Corruption is a global phenomenon that is eating almost every country dead. But the world has given corruption an African face. And that is why I said miseducation is a weapon used by others used by racists to disparage the rest of us. Here we go. Today's topic, why are African politicians so corrupt? Again, in fact, I will keep going back to Proverbs as we to help expatiate some of the things we're saying here today. Because our people say, a country, in this case, a continent, a people can be judged by the quality of his products, by the quality of his proverbs. Yes. A race, a people, a continent, a country can be judged by the quality of its proverbs. And that gives us the proverb of the day before we go into the topic, which says, it does not matter how high, how high one's heart is. Everybody knows the level our head inside the heart look at it look at my head look at the heart you're looking at we all know where the level of our head is inside so he that dips his hand in the pot we know that people don't tell you does not mean we don't know that you're a thief the thievery has to stop in Africa it is wrong but first, we're divided. So to make, to explain myself very well. There are external factors and there are internal factors. And then we go to so possible solutions if we choose to tackle it ourselves. External factors. Why are African politicians, African leaders so corrupt? The narrative, is, as a narrative is simplistic when we look at it just on the surface. Because, like I said, if you doubt me, ask yourself. Go to the north. Look at Israel. Is the current prime minister, that's Bibi Netanyahu, and his son not presently charged with fraud, bribery, and corruption? How many of you know about this? Who talks about it? Is it not the same bribery and corruption? Deadly one. As so many of the of African leaders that have really, really besmirched our faces in the face of the earth because the way we are, as colored people are treated is relative to the way African leaders govern us as a people. Is it Germany? Please look it up. The ex-president of Germany, ex, yes, the ex-president, Mr. Christian Wolff. Look him up. He's been charged. He's going to jail for bribery and corruption. Is it Italy? Is it Italy? Yes, the same Italy. The, the mob boss. The former prime minister, uh, Silva Berlusconi. We all know what he is. He's a criminal. He was charged with corruption. Is it Brazil? President Lula. Uh, Luis Inacio. I believe he's in jail right now. Um, is it Mexico? Uh, just yesterday, just yesterday, the former state, uh, the, the, the former uh, head of the state oil, uh, what is it called? The Pemex. Yes, Emilio Lozano. He just indicted, he gave evidence or charges, allegations against three former presidents of Mexico. Like I said, look it up. Israel, Germany, Italy, Brazil, Mexico. Why are we talking about United States? Or are we looking around the country, around the world? Yes, 
Let, me, let us come home again. It is a fact that African leaders, African, African politicians, they're corrupt. Look at, take for example, look at the Mo Ibrahim uh, Foundation Prize. What $5 million and no African leader, African leader do not even aspire to win it. In 2015, no one, no one in Africa, no African leader was even considered. In 2016, none. It was, thank God, in 2016, it was given to uh, Her, Her Excellency, Miss Ellen Selef Johnson, for successfully handing over power to a democratically elected government in the person of George Ware. 2018, none. 2019, none. So it's obvious. African leaders have owned up. I've said it. Yes, we are corrupt. We, we have indicted ourselves. But, and you all know, look, it's a fact. Look at what um, the Prime Minister, the former Prime Minister of Britain said. That's David Cameron. He told the Queen. He did not know that the mic was on. That African and Afghan leaders are fantastically corrupt. How dare him? How dare, how dare David Cameron or any leader for that matter in Europe say that African, who benefits from all the looting in Africa, if not first world nations? Who benefits from it? Look at Switzerland. What, has, what does Switzerland have? Look at Swiss Bank. Look at UK. Look at France. Is it not African economy that's sustaining France? Look at Germany. Look at what Germany do, did, Germany did, by hosting Berlin Conference in 1884. They carved up Africa like game. They carved up Africa like game. So look at UK, look at France, look at Germany, look at United States financial institutions. Look at Italy, Rome, look at Portugal. And then today, China, they are let China take the rest of the thing they left. That is, it's practically, China is practically carrying the, all of Africa resources. Even its fishes. Yes, I said fishes. Ask, ask, go to Cameroon. Look at what Paul Bia is doing. Look at the Cameroon MOUs that is signing off to Chinese too. They, they can fish along the coast of Cameroon for how many years? What will happen to the future of the children of Africa? Yes, they are corrupt. But when we say they are corrupt, we have to understand who makes it possible. The first world nations make this possible. If you think it's a lie, tell me how, why? How do they manage to siphon all this loot that they, oh my God, look, as I were still speaking, they are still discovering stolen money by Nigerian's ex late president, Sani Abacha. Yes, they are corrupt. There's no doubt about that. But people enable them. The first world nations enable them. If the world want, wanted Africa to be better, repeat, if the world wanted Africa to be better, they would have done something. How? Look at Israel. The, the world came together, banded together, and made Swiss vault open. A country that was formed in 1948. Look at Israel today. They made Germany pay Israel, save money to help that country start on its feet because the world felt guilty for what Germany unjustly did to Israel. But look at what the world made, made can, can, where are the reparations for Africa? Look at what Britain did. How come they came in, David Cameron to say Africans are corrupt? African leaders are corrupt. What about Britain? For what? They give our leaders they, they give their children visas. They give their wives, their concubines visas to come to Britain, to Germany, to Switzerland. They go to schools and leave our schools run down. Our medical facilities run down. Our, Africa, our African leaders accept these things and think they are okay. When at the end of the day, African treasure, Afri everything we own, from bauxite to oil to diamond, to gold, to cocoa, to rubber. They took it all. They took, they make sure they sabotage each time we want to do anything in Africa. They make sure they sabotage it. 
And what happens? They take these things, they say they refine them, only to send it back to us. And African leaders accept it. It's shameful. What can we say? They teach African people how to really suppress their people. If you think, if you doubt me, ask yourself, what happened to Patrice, Patrice Lumumba? Yes, Patrice Lumumba. With the help of United States CIA and the Belgium government agent, they, they killed that. He was assassinated. And then guess what? Look at what they gave to us. Look at how long he ruled Africa. Look at the damage he caused in between Mobutu, between Mugabe. Look at the damage they caused. And all this, these are stooges. These are people put in place in Africa. So long as they agree to protect Western interests. That is what I mean by miseducation. It's not enough to look at Mobutu Sese Soko because the, he knows the people don't want. It's not enough to look at Obia. He knows people don't want them. But they are there because the first world nation want them to be there. So that they keep repatriating funds to France, to Portugal. You think that is not enough? Think. Of, look at this guy. Look at him. He is a king uh, member of Congo. This was way back in, what is his name? This was way back in 1526. Look at what he wrote. Look, see, the Portuguese converted him. They converted him to Christianity. And he thought he was talking to human beings. He did not know he was talking to leeches. To dirty people. As at 1526. I'm not talking about even Patricia Move of the 60s. Listen to his words. Each day the traders are kidnapping our people. Children of this country. Sons of our nobles and vassals. Even people of our own family. This corruption and depravity are so widespread that our land is entirely depopulated. Can you hear that? We need in this country, country, kingdom only priests and school teachers and no merchandise unless it is wine and flour for mass. You see it? That's the heart of a Christian. It is our wish that this kingdom not be a place for trade or transport of slaves. Can you hear that? This was at 1526. He was protesting slavery. But all we hear every day, oh, Africans sold one another. Africans sold one another. But look at a king say from his, the, the horse's mouth, please. Many of our subjects eagerly lost for, lost after Portuguese merchandise that our subjects have brought into, that your subjects have brought into your domains. Mind you, he was writing to Rome and to Lisbon, to the king of Lisbon, thinking he was talking to a colleague. He didn't know they were laughing at him. Just as the first world nation are laughing at African leaders, politicians today. To satisfy their inordinate appetite, they seize many of our African free subjects. They sell them. Listen to that. They sell them. They seize them and sell them. After having taken these prisoners to the coast secretly or at night. Look at that. Where did he say? Yes, Africans helped facilitate this. But it is to what? Who corrupted them? The First World Nations. United Kingdom. The French. The Portuguese. The Spaniards. As soon as the captives are in the hands of Caucasians, Caucasian men, they are branded with red hot iron. This was a letter. This was just one amongst many written by King Vemba Nzanga. May so rest in peace. If that is not enough, look at this other man. Look at him. How many of you, ask yourself, how many of you know this man that you're looking at? This was a chief in Benin, Olobosheri. He was taken. He fought the British tooth and nail. And when he was captured, he was taken to England and he was executed in 1899. Yes, look at him. What I'm trying to tell you is this. There are things people don't let you to hear. There are things not out, not out there in the media. We don't know about it. We don't hear about it. But people, Africans have been trying. But each time people raise their voice, with mercenaries, they kill them. 
they take them out. They purchase the members. The Lobo Sherry's, the King of Vendors. And African leaders have perfected it. African leaders have perfected the art of eliminating opposition. Look at that. Is it Delegiwa? Is it Kensarawiwa? Look, even in Ghana, even in Somalia, look at what Asabab did to. Look at them, look at them. If you think what I'm saying does not, if it does, still doesn't make sense, is it by, by design that all of the colored nations in Western Hemisphere, the hemisphere has failed? Look at Haiti, look at the story of Haiti. Look at what France did to Haiti. Please read the history of Haiti. Look at the history of Jamaica because they gained their freedom and they colluded against them. Look at Puerto Rico. Now, look at Canada. Look at Mexico. Look at New Zealand. Look at Australia. Canada, New Zealand, Australia. But guess what? Mexico, Jamaica, Haiti, they cannot do well. Puerto Rico, they can't do well. What happened? If Puerto Rico is too far, what happened to Alaska? If the world will make Germany pay Israel back, why can't the world make UK pay Africa back for? It's looting. What can they make France stop? It's looting. And then European nation will have the, the guts to sink African in dinghy boats coming to Europe from the Mediterranean. Look at in Libya today. Totally eviscerated from face of the earth. The first world nations make distance possible. The first world nations entice African leaders. They give them things. They allow them to buy houses. How can they buy houses in Europe with African funds, with African money? How can they allow them to keep? Look, how can leaders, how much do they have? Look at, just look at Paul Beer. Go come to Nigeria and see what. Look, like I said, look, look, look at the salaries of Nigerian leaders and look at that abroad. Nigerian legislatures even earn more than members of parliament in the UK. It's so sad. Africa is sold. Africa, look, people think the Berlin Conference ended. It's not ended yet. The world is still carving Africa for itself in very dubious ways. Look at what China is doing. And when they struggle, they all run away. Look at what COVID-19 just did. Look at how they all ran away. They all ran back to the country. Very soon, everybody's going to come again. Like flies eating up what remains of Africa without mercy. And people, and David Cameron will really, really turn around and point at Africans and say they are corrupt. No, first world nations are corrupt. They made Africa what it is today. They allow Africans, instead of developing their medical facilities, their hospitals, they allow them. They send them planes. They send, look, come on, come. Medical tourism. And then all the little forex we have, we send it over to European nations. For headache, for eye pain, for neck pain, they will travel abroad. Meanwhile, our medical, our teaching hospitals are languishing. Their children go school, go to school, go to school abroad, while African children make do with strike with whatever it is that their parents leave behind. It's not right. It's not right. And people pretend there's not going to be problem in future. Of course, there's going to be problem. You can kill as much as you want, but judgment day is coming. It's got to stop because the facts are there for all to see. Compare. Look at what is happening in Libya. Look at Haiti. We can't pretend we don't know what, where these problems are coming from. But if it's others. In fact, even when reparations are agreed upon, imagine for slavery. For slavery, reparations were paid for slavery. But to whom? Not the people that suffered slavery. But to the owners, the slave owners. <laughs> to the same Caucasians for loss of labor. So that they can support the abolition. That's why I said about external factors. This is why African politicians are corrupt. Because the truth is this. If we really want, the world really want to hold Africa to its feet. Look, why would Africans leave Africa to go to anywhere else? We have it all. God has blessed Africa. 
God has blessed Africa. But they entice, entice our leaders that fall terribly, sadly, for the cheap gains at the expense of their own people. It's so sad. It is so sad. Okay. I'll leave that, that for now and then we'll go to internal factors. African leaders have perfected the art of starving all state all state uh, the, the, the state agencies and institutions, starve them of funds to operate independently. The police, the army, the judiciary. So each department or each agency is dependent on central government for survival. Making it possible for 50 policemen, for 100 policemen, for a battalion, more than a battalion, to protect just one or two people. Why? It's your conscience. You know you're not doing the right thing. They stab them a phone so there's no independence. They stab them a phone so people, because they stab the phones, they take bribe, they give bribe for the simplest things. I know this because I've seen the same Africans elsewhere in the world and they're one of the most hardworking people. They excel when given the opportunity. If things work fine, why would Africans give bribe and take? Why would they be less corrupt? Secondly, I think Africans as a people will respect our leaders too much. We respect them too much. We refuse to tell them the truth. Because why? We are very tribalistic. We have no political parties in Africa. None. We adapt or adopted things that are not organic to our system. Yes, there are no political parties in Africa. They are all religious organizations. They are all tribal, regional groups put together. That's why you can see a dance. Repeat. Dance and put him in charge because he's from your tribe, because he becomes, belongs to this religion. It's sad. Look at, just look at. It is so sad. And people seem to have given up. That is why, as a people, we sell our vote for half bag of salt. Half bag of salt for a promise. People you know are corrupt. For people you've never even seen. How did we get here, my people? When are we going to say enough is enough? When are we going to say enough is enough? Most of all, because of the crimes, because of the atrocities of African leaders, they are scared to leave the post because they got nothing to show for it. So they are all old men. Look, 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 just... <sighs> Start from Paul Beer. Look at Mugabe. Look at Mobutu. Look at Buhari. Look at all of them. It is sad. It is sad. 80, 90 years, somebody is still fighting for power. It is sad. These are the kinds of, like us. And then how can how can religious how can religious heads? People will respect, even though really there is no religion per se in Africa. They are so, we are so, we sound very religious, but we are not. We are not. It's not organic. Africa, colored people are the only people that worship a God that does not come from their own place. That is a religion that is not organic. Does not, politics, a political party that's not organic does not make sense. It does not make sense. Look at the Japanese. Look at Middle East. Look at the Indians. Look at the Chinese. That is our problem. We adopted things we do not understand. And that is why the king of Portugal, even though they converted King Mvembe of the Democratic Republic of Congo in 1526, was laughing at him when he was complaining about his people. All they were interested in is the money to invest in their place. They took advantage of the poor man. Well, again, I'll stop there. And then let's talk about the solutions. If we really are serious about changing things in Africa, 
all children of any public office holder must not school abroad. They must school in the country. Their parents, their father is governor. They also school with us, those of us that school in the country. It is not, we are on strike. Other children are on strike. Universities are shut down in African countries. But these other people, they fly out. Just look at them. They fly out to watch their children graduate. It is sad. It is sad. We have to at least use that as a symbol. Save forests. And all schools built by any religious organization, any religious organization must allocate 50%, repeat, 50% of the admission to the church members. Yes, church members. That is their tithe. That is their money. They invested in that church. Make them go to that school. And not even that. They can only, you only pay 30% of the stipulated fee. Repeat. 50% of the admission, it will not kill the church. It will not kill that school. We must have mercy on our people. We can stand in the pulpit and say, God, God, God. Without showing action. Even the Bible says, faith without action is what? We've got to help our people. Our people are dying. Fourthly. No African leader should be flown abroad for medical treatment. Yes. In the case of Nigeria, and a leader was even his dead, his corpse was brought back to. I was solving. People were laughing. People were laughing at Africa. Yes. They we have med look, even the abroad they go. It is still Africans that work at those hospitals. People of color. So guess what? Let them use that money to build up their own hospitals of home. It is a trickery that first world nations used to entice African leaders. Visas, medical facilities, admissions for their students. No, stop it. Stop it. Develop your own in your country. Number five, upon debt, whatever money Whatever prom- property that was not declared on assumption, on the initial assumption of the political office, will be forfeited to the state or federal government. Yes. In case in point, look at Sami Abacha. We are still looking for the money he spread around the world. So any money, any house. With a certificate of upgrade that's not completed, that was not declared on assumption of office, was it for me forfeited? And then look at the look, look, please look at the look at Judge Washington's house. Of course, the slaves that maintained the house for him at that time, they're no more. So guess what? It is being run professionally. Even when I was in Germany as a soldier, I still went to edifice, beautiful house that built in 14th century. They are maintained. Please take a look at Mobutu's house. One man. Take a look at Babangida. Yes, Ibrahim Babangida's house in Nigeria. Please, please. When this man goes, please let somebody take care of his house. This is our own money. This is Africa's money. Look at Pobia's rest. It is sad. But we have to protect our own. We cannot let what they did. Even if at their loot, we have to recover something. If it is put right, somebody else can buy it up. It's happening. It is sad. It is very sad. All foreign loans should be revisited. All foreign loans should be revisited every two years by the opposition party and the judiciary for fairness. Two years every, all foreign loans must be revisited. And worst of all, because of the nonsense that just happened in Nigeria, all foreign loans must be in the lingua franca of the receiving nation. Repeat, in the lingua franca of the receiving nation, China has made a mess of us as a people. So we have to put it in writing. Again, 70% of the workers of any loan received from any country 
must come from the receiving country. I repeat, 70%. In the case of the loans we receive, China bring, bring in technicians in the name of engineers and still make us pay them. How sad. How sad. China bring it bring people from jail. Bring technicians. Failed human beings, they bring them to Africa and rob us, still make us pay them as engineers. And African leaders, they declare, where does that complex come from? I don't understand. Each loan, each foreign loan received must have an inbuilt, inbuilt method of payment and payment plan, feasible one, approved guaranteed by an account, a reputable accounting firm in the country receiving it. Yes. MOUs should be banned in Africa. MOUs should be banned. All contracts come in phases and at each phase, if the contract is not, that part of that contract is not completed, at that phase, it should be cancelled. It's not an avoid. It's not an avoid. Phase by MOUs is a criminal enterprise used by corrupt politicians to do people. They come and buy salt, whatever, and people will clap for them and then put the debt on their head, on their children's children's head. It is wrong. And then their children will leave that Desianis children. Look at look at her running around, and now she's the Dominican Republic. Look at her in Dominic in Dominican Republic at Nigerians' expense. How sad! The world is laughing at all of us. Anyone who runs for any political party must reside in that locality. Yes, no one can be helicoptered in to run and represent you. Worst of all, how can governors, how can governors live after eight years, then become senators and go and retire? That is sad. That, that, that is, this, 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 it's so sad. It is so sad. It is stealing. How can you look at Obama, look at Clinton, look at Carter. They try to help pop the Yes. These are some of the things, and above all, we must have age limits. Age limits. Age limit are government positions. 75. Yes, ask me else. 75 is okay. After 75, please leave. Please leave. Please leave. Look at Paul Bia. Look at Mobutu. Look at Black. How sad. These were people at 40 something, they were already having positions. Did I say? No child of public office holder in Africa should run for any political position 10 years from the father's exit, either alive or dead. Yes, exit. 10 years. Look at what is happening in Equatorial Guinea. Look at what is happening in Equatorial Guinea. The president's son, wife. Look at Mobutu. Look at what they're doing around. The world is laughing at Africa. No, this is why the world, that is why we have police brutality. That's in the United States. That is why we have people just don't respect people of color because of the way African leaders comport themselves. If we comport ourselves right, like I said, even the even Saudi Arabians are not treated the way people of color are treated in the United States or around the world. Each time people see me, they want to they they see my leader in front of me, and it is sad. And each time we try to we try to honestly not to disparage them, honestly to change things, they look for ways to kill. We look for ways to kill him, destroy him. As if destruction will change things. Look at the story of Nathan and Daniel. Nathan, God sent Nathan. Go and tell him what he did. 
and Nathan told him. As if it's a story or a parable. And David said, surely that person must die. Yes. When David, to- when, uh, when, uh, David told Nathan that that person surely must die. I said, that was you. David was sorry, but he told him, you will not die, but guess what? The child which you're bearing will die. I hope that's the way the story went, but the truth is this, African leaders, we must respect opposition. We must respect people telling us what we're doing it's not, being, it's not profitable because at the end of the day, we see your children. You will leave the world with us and your children. You don't want to be like Judas that nobody wants to bear the name again. Please, Africa. African nations are burning. Help us. You can do better. You must recognize what the first world nations are doing to you. They're laughing at you. Like David Cameron, they're laughing at you. It's unfortunate. Even Nigeria's president said it's not his his surprise. And the Afghan president said it's not right. But you're just whining. Do something about it. That's what we used to say when I was in the military. Do something. No matter how small, posterity will not forget. Hey, you can join this battle. You want to be taken seriously? Sponsor a segment in our, in our channel. Advertise in our channel. Like, subscribe, please subscribe. Please subscribe. Like I said, if you want to be taken seriously, this is the place to be seen. We want your business to sustain what we're doing. Once again, this is Diaspora Forum. The next, uh, we we're going to present the next segment, which is the shout outs for the day. Once again, please subscribe, like, leave your comments, whatever you think that can make Africa better. Please, they, look, it is so much to say, but there is no time to say it all. Like, subscribe. For shout outs today, the first person is uh, Bien's. Gawanas, oh my God. I wish you could see, she is the voice of Africa and United Nations. She's from Namibia, East Africa. Ms. Gawanas is the voice of Africa and United Nations. She's the UN Under Secretary, Under Secretary General and Special Advisor on Africa. And as head of the Office of the Special Advisor on Africa, uh, uh, it is a duty to promote and build synergies across the UN system in support of Africa's priorities and promote African views and perspectives that foster an understanding of Africa's experiences on peace and economic development, a staunch social justice and uh, gender sensitive development policy campaigner. In her role, she also continues to champion and focus on the fight against social injustice, discrimination, and gender inequality. Miss Gawanas, thank you so much for what you're doing. We're proud of you. The next person is, um, we all know him from, by, by his music, but he's doing much more. And really want to say thank you, Mr. Akon. But he comes from Senegal, West Africa. His real name is Alu, Alume Damala Badara Akon Thiem. I hope I pronounce it right. If not, please forgive me. But hey, bro, you're doing a good job. Econ is a Senegalese American singer, songwriter, record producer, enter- entrepreneur, philanthropist, and actor from New Jersey. He rose to prominence in 2004 following the release of Locked Up, the first single from his debut album Trouble in 2004, followed by the second single, Lonely. He's the first solo artist to hold both the number one and number two spots, uh, spots simultaneously on the Billboard Hot 100 charts twice. Akon has had four songs certified as uh, platinum. Three songs certified as uh, two, uh, platinum. More than 10 songs certified, certified again as platinum. And more than 10 songs certified as gold in digital sales. 
Akon has sung, has sung songs in other languages, including Hindi, Hindi and Spanish. He was listed by the Guinness Book of World Records as the number one selling artist for mastering tones in the world. Akon is recognized for his choosing to move back to Senegal to give back to his people. Today, top artists go to Senegal, not the United States, to seek his entrepreneurial skills. He's into cryptocurrency and developing a futuristic city called Econ City in Senegal. He basically has brought the world to his people in Senegal. Good job, Econ. The third person is uh, Jean Jacques Muyembe Thamfum. He's from Democratic Republic of Congo. We refer to him as Africa's Ebola warrior. Mr. Jean Muyembe is a Congolese microbiologist. He is the general director of Democratic Republic of Congo, Republic of Congo Institute National Pour la Rochelle Biomedical, the INRB. He was part of he was part of the team at the Yambuku, Yambuku Catholic Mission Hospital that investigated the first Ebola outbreak and was part of the effort that discovered Ebola as a new disease. Although his exact role is still subject to controversy. In 2016, he led the research that designed, along with other researchers at the INRB and the National Institute of Health Vaccine Research Center in the United States, one of the most promising, promising treatments for Ebola. The treatment was successfully experimented during recent outbreak in Democratic Republic of Congo on the express decision of the then DRC Minister of Health, Mr. Oli Ilunga despite a poor negative advice from World Health Organization. Again, miseducation. The fourth person is uh, Mr. Thierry Zomahun from Republic of Benin. He's making education count. Thierry Zomahun is a, an administrator, development strategist, management expert, and a thought, and a thought leader for innovative education initiative. He is, a no, he is no longer president and chief executive officer of the African Institute of Mathematical Sciences, the EMS, but during his leadership at EMS, he focused on developing and expanding a network of campuses for graduate scholarship and research in mathematical sciences. He, saved, he was saved from the streets by his grandmother. He learned the value of education at a young age and achieved graduate degrees from universities in Africa, Europe, and North America. Since 2011, his work has focused on creating an enabling environment for the transformation of Africa through education. Woo! Mr. Thierry, thank you very much. And the fifth person is from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, United States. His name is Colin Kaepernick, the power of one. Look at him. After Jesse Owens, there was Muhammad Ali and then Colin Kaepernick. Like others, he used his platform to effectively make his point. He lost a lot of battles, but he won the war. Till today, he has no job. Yes, till today, he has no job. He was blacklisted by NFL and disparaged by the President of the United States of America, but he stood his ground. All those who pretended not to understand the point of his protest soon got it by force in the streets of America. Today, they apologize and look for ways to make amends. Black Lives Matter has become cool again. Kaepernick sat during, sat during the playing of the national, U.S. national anthem prior to the game rather than stand as, in, as is customary, as a protest against racial injustice, police brutality, and systemic oppression in the country. He kneeled to draw attention to police brutality against people of color, but his actions were intentionally misconstrued to make it seem as if it was against the U.S. military. Yet, no one bothered to read the lyrics of the second stanza of the U.S. national anthem or the writer and import of the lyrics to people of color. Thank you, Mr. Kaepernick. Thank you, LeBron James. Thank you, Mr. Legend. Thank you so many others. We at Diaspora Forum thank all entertainers and artists the, like the Beyonce's who put 
everything on the line to speak up and seek justice. Martin Luther King and John Lewis told us it is necessary. Thank you very much. We look forward to hearing, I look forward to hearing from you. Please subscribe, like, leave your comments. Like I said, this is an exhaustive topic to treat. Hopefully you contribute what you think about it, how to make Africa, how to make our people great again. Thank you very much. I really look forward to speaking at a venue close to you. Remember, I'm a motivational speaker. If you look at your screen, you see my information on the screen. I would like to speak, talk one-on-one -on -one to you, answer your questions as best as I can. Remain blessed. Keep up the good fight. Mekara is my name. Thank you.